Okay, and now we can go ahead and just dive right in to our watercolor flower course. Um, we are gonna be working on this in particular painting right here. I'm gonna teach you different techniques and ways to achieve this, but of course, feel free to do this in any way that you want. Apply these techniques to create any sort of picture that you want. I get so many requests on how to paint watercolor flowers and this is just one way to do it. So feel free to copy mine exactly or be a little creative and add some of your own flowers to it or whatever you wanna do um, and just follow along. Why don't we start by talking about the materials that you're gonna need. I know we mentioned this earlier in the course preview, but I wanna make sure that you guys know exactly what you're gonna need for this course. So first, paint brushes, very simple. These are just basic paint brushes from Michaels. We're also gonna be using watercolor paints. Any kind of watercolor paints will be fine. And then lastly, I have a mixed media sketchbook. Feel free to use any paper you want. I highly recommend using a thicker paper. When you use thicker paper, it doesn't ripple when you paint on it. So make sure that you're using something that's not going to get super wrinkly, like a computer paper is not gonna be great, something a little bit thicker. That's why I like to buy these sketchbooks that are the thicker paper. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and get started with our first flower. We're gonna start with this blue flower. So go ahead and get your brush wet and then add a little bit of blue, whatever color blue looks good to you in your paint palette. You can even mix some colors to make your own color. Um, and this is the blue that I'm gonna use. And we're just gonna start with a few little brush strokes. I'm making essentially little U shapes. And you're just gonna be going in a circular motion, creating the same U shape over and over, kind of like a little kidney bean. And we're just gonna layer these together as it grows bigger and bigger to make this larger flower. So let's go ahead and take a closer look. So I'm just going to keep creating these kidney bean shapes going in an outward motion. I'm not using a ton of paint. They're, the paintbrush is pretty wet. We wanna make sure that that paint is flowing nicely. Um, if you notice, I am not touching any of these shapes together. I'm leaving sort of a white space between each of them. This is gonna create a very cool effect in the end for that flower to give it some definition and some texture. So why don't you continue to create these little shapes in an outward motion, creating whatever size flower you're wanting to create. You're gonna to notice too that as we're moving further out in the flower, those petals are gonna get bigger and bigger. We're gonna blend them together with just a little bit of water just to make it really flow together and look like it's all one piece, one cohesive flower, but we still wanna maintain some of those white spaces. So make sure that you're not filling it all in with blue paint, but it is okay to sort of blend a couple of those petals together to really make it look like it's full and um, connected within that flower. Okay, now I'm gonna switch colors. I'm gonna make sort of like a maroon color, mix some red and some purple, and I'm gonna start my second flower. We're gonna start with a U shape. We're gonna create a very different looking flower. This flower is actually gonna be viewed from the side. So we're making sort of the profile of this flower. So as I just start lightly putting in this paint onto my paper, again, my brush is very wet, and I'm just creating a U shape with um, sort of pointed petals at the top, if you can see how I'm doing this. I'm just making little pointed petals, making it look very organic. There's nothing perfect about it. It's not symmetrical, nothing like that. You're just going to be filling that shape in with some color and giving it sort of a rigid top. Then I'm gonna go back and get some color that's darker, a lot more paint, less water, and it's gonna be a shade darker than the paint that I just used. And I'm creating sort of the other side of that flower and I'm going to be filling in the space between so they sort of blend together. And this is, in the end, gonna create sort of a shadow within your flower to create that round depth that we're looking for. Now I'm gonna switch to a gold color. So find a color on your paint, on your paint palette that you like, yellow, gold, mix orange and yellow together to create a nice gold color. And I'm gonna go back to my original style of creating the kidney bean shapes. And I'm gonna create a very similar flower to the blue flower, except I'm using this gold color. So just duplicate what you did for that blue flower 
and create the same kind of flower, similar size as well. Um, just filling it in with those shapes, leaving that white space in between. To give it a really cool look, it's nice to have some of these petals look a little darker, some of them look a little bit lighter. It's gonna give it some nice depth. Okay, so now we're gonna move down to the bottom right-hand side of the paper. Again, if you wanna put this somewhere else, that's fine. And we're gonna sort of duplicate the other maroon flower that we created, except this one is facing down. So you're creating that upside-down U-shape with a similar wash to it with that maroon color, not too dark and then go back and make that darker maroon color and create a little bit of a shadow at the tips of that other petal that you just created with that darker color. This is gonna create your shadow once again and we'll get back to this later after this dries. We're just laying in the color for now. Right here, I'm just adding a little bit of shadow to the bottom of this, I guess it would be the top in this sense, but the, the base of that flower just to give it a little depth. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna create sort of a yellowish color. I'm not going quite as dark as the other gold one. I would like to have a yellow flower in here. So mixing some yellows together, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start doing again those kidney bean shapes exactly like we've done before. Just keep practicing that same style, creating a similar flower. I think I'm gonna make this one a similar size once again um, to the blue and the gold flower. Don't forget to leave those white spaces between your petals. That really does give it definition. Okay, now we're gonna start adding some greenery. So I'm gonna find a green, and again, you don't have to use any particular color green. It's totally up to you. You can mix some colors together. My palette happens to have quite a few options for green, but I like to mix them together and make sort of like that nice, rich green color, almost a turquoise color. I'm adding a lot of water to this, making sure that it's nice and wet, make sure my brush is nice and wet. And now I'm going to find a spot in my paper where I want a twig of, of leaves to stick out. So I've just come off the side of our blue flower and just drawn a skinny, skinny, skinny little, little branch. And then to that, I'm just gonna add these itty bitty little leaves, nothing big, nothing with a lot of detail. They're just little leaf shapes, pointy at the end, connected by a small little line to make it look very delicate. And I'm gonna do this all the way down the twig and at the tip, I'm gonna add a little leaf as well and then go back down and match the other side. Okay, now I wanna add sort of some leaves or some greenery that's gonna attach this red flower to the rest of the, um, the blossoms. So I've added a couple dark green leaves, nothing too detailed, just a couple of shapes to connect those to the rest of the bouquet. Now I'm gonna make another twig going out the opposite side, doing a similar style, similar color, adding those little tiny leaves once again all the way up the side. Make sure that you're using a brush that's fairly pointed for this. So if you have a smaller brush with you, that's perfect. Those bigger brushes might be a little bit tricky to use for this. So make sure you have something with a small point at the tip on hand for these little small leaves. I always love to see how the paint falls based on where the water's dripping. You can see on these leaves that there's little pools of paint um, at the tips of the leaves, and that's not of my doing. That is just what the paint has done, and I just love that about watercolors. So let your paints do what they're gonna do. Okay, so now I've gone back for some more green, and again, I wanna connect the bottom flower so that it looks like it's blossoming out of the same place. I've given it a little stem and attached that with a few little lines, and now I'm gonna give it some leaves. 
So I've had two little twigs that are connected, if you can see that. And then add some leaves, just like I did before. These ones are a little bit bigger than the other two that we've already done. Again, similar style, just a little bit bigger. And then I just fill them in. If you notice, I don't have a ton of paint on my brush. It's mostly water. And that allows that dripping to happen within the, within the leaf. Perfect. Okay, so now we're gonna go back up to the top and you, I'm just looking at my picture and looking at empty spaces where I wanna fill it in with greenery. So let's do the same up here. I'm adding a few twigs. This color that I've used, I've added a tiny bit of yellow to it just to give it a different shade. So feel free to do the same with yours or feel free to just stick with your darker green. I'm just adding some bigger leaves in here. I really want some contrast. I don't want them all to be teeny tiny. So we're going with some bigger leaves just to give it some of that contrast. Go ahead and add some leaves for yourself, however you want to do it. Feel free to copy mine or play with some of your own style. Does not matter. Again, you'll see I don't have a ton of paint on my paintbrush. It's mostly water, a lot of wet, wet, wet paint on here, allowing that dripping to happen within the leaves. All right, so now we're gonna do one coming out the top because there is a gap there and I'd like to fill it in with some greenery. So I'm gonna create another skinny twig and add a few little branches coming off of it. I'm then gonna add some of those tiny leaves again. I have stuck with that yellow green color that I created for the bigger leaves. I like that contrast. So I'm gonna stick with that for this and create some of these smaller leaves again. Um, if you think about branches, they're pretty skinny, so you don't wanna push too hard when you're creating those branches. They're very wispy. At the bottom, I'd like to have some bigger leaves coming out of the orange um, gold flower. And then off of that, I wanna create the same kind of twig just to create some consistency with the painting. Small leaves. So we have this little gap here between the gold and the blue flower that I really wanna fill. And there were some um, flowers I recently bought for my mom that had these small green, almost um, berry-like shapes. So I'm gonna add some of these into my bouquet because I really liked the way they looked. So I'm using a darker green to create sort of a U shape for the bottom part of that berry shape. And then I'm gonna go back with a yellowish green color to fill in the top. And that's just gonna give it a natural shadow. Okay, now I want you to go back and get a darker red color. We're gonna add some details to our shadow area of our red flowers. Using your um, pointed brush, I want you to add little dots in that shadow area on both of your red flowers. And this is gonna create sort of a, an effect and sort of a fullness to those flowers just by adding a little bit of texture. This is just a texture that we're adding. Not a whole lot goes into it, don't overthink it. Very, very subtle. Now I want you to grab a darker blue color so that we can revisit the blue flower and do the same. So these dots are just gonna go in the middle of that blue flower. Again, we're just creating a texture. We're just creating sort of the illusion that there's something else happening in the middle of that flower. 
Now we're gonna go back to our gold flower, do the same thing. Again, make sure this color is a little bit darker than the actual flower itself. So this isn't quite dark enough. I'm gonna get a little bit of red as well to make sure that this shows up. There we go. So now we've got just the hint of some detail. Just making sure that it's dark enough. So now I want to revisit the yellow flower, make sure that that one has the same detail. I'm using more of an orange color to fill in the middle of this one and just adding subtle dots to create that effect. That's it guys, we are done. You have finished your painting. Feel free to rewind the video, rewatch it as many times as you need to, and we can create this painting over and over and over, try different techniques, different layouts, different colors. Um, I would love to see your paintings. Make sure that you are tagging me on Facebook or Instagram if you are painting them, um, Alex Sabat on both of those platforms. So I would love to see them. You guys did so great today and I am excited to see what you are creating. Thank you so much for being a part of this course and I look forward to seeing you in my next one. Bye guys.